The state television company Western Armenia represents the most important news for today. Good day. Today's broadcast. The 8th Council of Ministers of Government of Republic of Western Armenia. Today is the Liberation Day of Karvajar. Paku has become active on the borders again. The AU observation mission denied the message of the Ministry of Defense of Baku. The people of Artsakh are ready to protect the village of Tavush. Halushi Akar, it is important for Armenia to accept the hand of peace. Presentation of the book Zmyrnia Cries and Armenia Remembers. On April 1, the 8th Council of Ministers of the Government of Republic of Western Armenia was held. The session was chaired by the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Lydia Markosyan. During the session, the general situation of the government of Western Armenia was discussed. Armenia Gablahamyan, the first President of the Republic of Western Armenia, presented a draft which states, taking into account the fact that the Yerevan authorities are ready to hand over several territories of the Republic of Armenia to the Baku authorities, a draft was suggested by the government of Western Armenia, based on the provisions of the Constitution. April 1 is the 41st anniversary of the liberation of Karvajar. On this day in 1993, Karvajar, one of the most important locations in Artsakh, was liberated. The operation to liberate Karvajar began on March 27, 1993. On April 1, the district was already liberated. On April 1, Karvajar was liberated to two freedom warriors, Armena Gabrahamyan, Hovsep Hovsepian, Volodya Avetisyan, Sarkis Karapetyan, Misha Tatevoysyan, Hovsep Narsisyan, Vigen Abrahamyan, and others. Karvajar was liberated. In 1993, at the end of March, the situation had sharply worsened on the northwest front. The Berzor Karvajar and grouping of Baku began to carry out re offensive operations against the Armenian forces stationed in Martagert in Berzor region from the northwestern and southeastern directions. The command of the self defense forces was tasked with neutralizing the firing points located in Karvajar and Berzor and defeating the Berzor Karvajar grouping. The Karvajar military operations was dictated in order to secure the rear of Artsakh self-defense forces waging liberation battles in Martagerk region. The command of the self-defense forces were aware of complexity of the military operation being undertaken. Here everything was critical. An overstrain of forces, high discipline, skill in strategy and readiness for self-sacrifice were required. After organizing a small but effective defense in Martagir, the Armenian forces on March in 1993, after preemptive strikes and artillery preparation, undertook a military operation of neutralizing the strongholds of Karvajar region and liberating the territories of Berzo region under the control of the enemy in several directions. The battalions of the Martagir Defense Region, operating under the command of Norai Danielian, carried out the attacks in the northern direction of Omar. On April 5, the entire Armenian nation was rejoicing. The Armenian armed forces had come out of the Omari Lobster Pass, thus completing the liberation of Karvajar, the citadel of Artsakh. The liberation of Karvajar was a vital necessity to ensure the security of the north of Artsakh. The operation of throwing the enemy out of Karvajar and to make the Azerbaijan firing position took place from March 27 to April 1. This part of Western Armenia has been occupied by Turkish Azerbaijan forces since November 9, 20 Baku recalled the statement of November 9, noting that after 2020, Eastern Armenia supplied arms to Artsakh. Moreover, Baku accuses Eastern Armenia of creating a defensive line on its border after 2020, from which offensive operations can be carried out. The sudden update of Baku's memory shows that the group of on which Aliyev's so-called victory was built is not wavering at all, it is not ground at all. There are no legal grounds to justify the occupation of Artsakh and the displacement of 100% of the population. Baku complains that it did not receive support from Brussels and Washington when Azerbaijan lands were occupied for 40 years. No, France has a defense treaty with Eastern Armenia and the European Peace Foundation intends to provide military aid to Armenia, says Baku. Baku also stated that against the background of revanchist sentiments in Yerevan, the openly pro-Armenian stance of Washington and Brussels can create a dangerous illusion in Eastern Armenia that the European Union and US will support Yerevan in possible provocations against Baku. The EU observation mission denied the message of the Ministry of Defense of Baku. The observation mission of European Union in Eastern Armenia has denied the message spread by the Ministry of Defense of Baku that as if the Armenian armed forces are moving on the border. 
Earlier, the Ministry of Defense of Baku spread an information that the Armenian Armed Forces are carrying out movements on the border of Baku, and which was denied by the Ministry of Defense of Armenia, emphasizing that the message does not correspond to the reality at all, and that was spread by the Ministry of Defense by Baku. The observation mission of the European Union in Armenia carried out a patrol along the Armenian-Azerbaijan border throughout the whole day. Everything is calm, unusual movements were not noticed. In its turn, the observation mission of the European Union in Armenia wishes everyone a peaceful Easter, said the post on Missions X page. Toivo Klar, the AU special representative for the crisis in the South Caucasus and Georgia, also responded to this post of the AU observation mission. I am happy to receive confirmation from the European Union observation mission in Armenia that no unusual military movement have been observed. This is the main goal of the mission, to ensure greater transparency and build trust. The mission also remains open to further interaction with the Baku authorities, Klar wrote. Later, the mission made another post. On March 41, the European Union's observation mission in Armenia sent patrols to monitor the Armenian side of the Armenian-Azerbaijan border and to report in case of unusual military movements on the border. All evidence is reported that the situation was calm and that unusual movements were not observed, said the post. Armenians cannot give in Artsakh. It is necessary to demand that negotiations begin regarding the return of Artsakh citizens to Artsakh. Our salvation is the return. But there must be conditions for Baku and Turks to leave Artsakh so that not only the international peacekeepers, but also the reborn Armenian army of Artsakh are the guarantors of the security of the Armenian in Artsakh. Before it's too late, before it, Armenians must unite to defend their rights to their historical land. Start with the return of Artsakh and the defense of Tavush. With the people of Artsakh are ready to protect the villages of Tavush. This was said by Hrant Shirinyan, head of Magavu's community of Martagert region of Artsakh, in a conversation with Step 1 AM. He said that on September 19, Magavu's, like all settlements of Artsakh, was subjected to continuous ground and air shelling. He said that on September 19, Magavu's, like all settlements of Artsakh, was subjected to continuous ground and air shelling. When relative peace was established, he decided to immediately evacuate the residents to Stepanakert in order for that men will be able to join and protect our soldiers in the location. We decided not to leave women, children, and the elderly in the village. If the enemy enters the village, there will be massacre. We have already started receiving news about the killing of civilians by Baku from various villages near the border, so I decided to evacuate everybody. Much later, the peacekeeper began to evacuate evacuate the population of Drombon and other villages. He mentioned that the battles with the enemy in location continued until the moment when they were informed that the command of the Artsakh armed forces gave an order to lay down the weapons. Shinyan noted with regret that the deportation scattered the people of Magavuz all over Armenia. Due to financial and social difficulties, each family survives as best they can. A compact lifestyle with, will be the best solution. It would enable fellow villagers to support each other and it would be easier to adapt. The identity and characteristic of each village of Mardagir will be preserved, and in case of return it will be possible to return with community. But unfortunately, the government of Eastern Armenia does not have such a program, and there are no sponsors for each other. Lucy Agar, the chairman of the National Defense Committee of the Ankara Parliament, met with the delegation led by Mike Rogers, the chairman of Armed Forces Committee of the U.S. House of Representatives. During the meeting, Agar noted, saying, I hope that we will continue the exchange of views and visits for the benefit of our countries, NATO, regional structures, peace stability, and the solution of some problems between Turkey and the USA in the region. I hope that we will get positive results from the visit. During the question and answer session with journalists after the meeting, Agar noted that at the meeting they also discussed everything that the Turkish side is doing in connection with the Baku. Baku Yerevan issue and insisted that it is important for Armenia to accept the hand of peace extended to it. Presentation of the book Smyrna Cries Armenia Remembers. In the evening of March 14, inside the Tagore and Rosa Vedikian Hall of the Aramamangian Club in Fix, organized by the District of Amazgayan Board by teacher Ms. Vasiliki Pitulin's presentation book Smyrna Tears Armenia Remembers. Union representatives, Armenian and Greek writers were present. This presentation also st started with a bold statement. Azad or a few days ago, but she did not get to enjoy the award planned by Hamas Gain. The memorial was honored with a moment of standing silence. By Hamas Gain curator Koi, in the brief opening speech, Jack Tamanya mentioned that the book uniquely combines the works of 1915 and 1922, the article based on real events. 
This was all for today. Goodbye.